I'm a physicist, and we know what the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years may look like. For example, the internet. The internet will be in our contact lens. Wherever we look, we will see images. For example, I will see you. My contact lens will recognize you, print out your biography in my contact lens. And if you're speaking a foreign language, I will see subtitles. I will see subtitles beneath your image. But this will be when? Uh, again, within 10, 20 years now, Wow! we hope to have the internet in our glasses, the internet in our contact lenses, paper will, be, will have the internet on it, wallpaper will be intelligent in the future, chips that today cost thousands of dollars will cost a few pennies. So people who are paralyzed today, paralyzed, can have a chip put in their brain, connected to a laptop, they can now do crossword puzzles, do email, um, play video games, and they are paralyzed. In the future, we'll be able to walk into the room and telep telepathically turn on computers, telepathically move objects, all with the power of the mind, because the brain is a radio transmitter. Already we have robot cooks, cooks that have artificial arms that can go on and make mm -hmm. things. Uh, they can make noodles in one minute and 40 seconds. Okay? <laughs> so in the future, you will simply punch the kind of meal you want, <laughs> a hamburger maybe, and it'll, it'll make the meal and, and give it to you. Invisibility, like Harry Potter, where you go like this and you turn invisible, that could be possible within the next 10, 20 years. Already at Duke University in North Carolina, we have taken an object like this, put it in a coil, and under microwaves made it disappear. You might be able to travel backwards in time to meet your teenage mother before you're born. And then, of course, you have a problem if your teenage mother falls in love with you before you're born. <laughs> <laughs> you're in big trouble. However, we think that perhaps maybe in outer space, aliens have already done it. Maybe our descendants, many centuries from now, can build a time machine. So one day, if somebody knocks on your door, and says, I am your great, 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 great granddaughter, don't slam the door. Transporters, like in Star Trek, where you yes. dissolve and reappear someplace else, we can do that now with particles of light and atoms. Okay. Cesium atoms, rubidium atoms, and photons, particles of light, have been teleported across the room. Particles have, when they're separated, there's like an umbilical cord, an invisible umbilical cord that connects them, even if there's a brick wall in the way. Something, when you move one object, the other twin, the other twin in some sense is aware of this fact. Now Einstein hated this idea, I, uh -huh. and he called it spooky at action at a distance. But hey, we measure it every day. It's true, Einstein was wrong. The aging process, we might be able to slow down First of all, as organs wear out, we will replace them with organs grown from our own cells. Already mm. today, we can grow skin, cartilage, noses, ears, heart valves. We can also grow bladders and trachea. These can be grown in the laboratory today from your own cells. And now we want to find the genes that control the aging process. Right now, we've isolated roughly 60 genes that seem to control Incredible. the process of aging in our So body. our expectation life in 12 years, in 20 years, will be what? We don't know. Uh, there's no fountain of youth. I don't want to get yes. anyone overexcited that there's a fountain okay. of youth. <laughs> However, we're getting closer. So the fountain of youth is not such a mystery anymore. Do you believe in God? Well, I looked at the work of Einstein, who said mm. there really are two kinds of gods. We have to be very careful to distinguish mm -hmm. between two kinds of gods. The first is the personal God, the God of prayer, mm -hmm. the God that kills the Philistines, the God that parts the waters, the God of Moses, Moses and Isaac and Jacob. Einstein had a hard time believing that God from above would spend all his time killing your enemies and making, making your people you don't like sick. He thought there was a second God. This other God is the God of Spinoza, the God of Leibniz. It's the God, God of beauty, harmony, simplicity, truth, that the universe is so gorgeous, so beautiful, it didn't have to be that way. The universe could have been ugly. 
universe could have been random, and yet all the laws of physics can be placed on one sheet of paper, believe it or not. One sheet of paper contains all the fundamental laws of physics. On we June. now believe that even before the Big Bang, exactly. that you can even go to a pre-Big Bang universe, before hmm. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Our universe is a bubble of some sort. We live on the skin of the bubble. We're trapped like flies on flypaper, and our hmm. bubble is expanding, but hmm. there are other bubbles out there, we think. Hmm. And it's like a bubble bath. We have universes popping into existence, colliding. This is called the multiverse of universes. When two universes bump into each other, they can create another baby universe. Or perhaps the universe buds, sprouts a baby universe. And that's probably where the Big Bang came from. The Big Bang probably came when two bubbles either collided or fission in half to create our universe. We believe that there was something beyond Einstein's equations, string theory. String theory is more powerful than Einstein's theory. String theory just goes right before the Big Bang. And we will test this idea in the coming years. We are going to send a satellite into orbit. Three satellites connected by laser beams. Mm -hmm. Anytime a gravity wave hits the laser beam, it'll jiggle the satellites and record the message. It's like looking for gravity earthquakes in outer space. These vibrations are from the Big Bang, resonating around our universe, even today. We will pick them up and we will have baby pictures of creation. Well, we have two great ideas of physics. One is relativity theory, which gives us the Big Bang, black holes, the cosmos. The second is the opposite, the quantum theory, the theory of the very, very tiny. The two theories don't like each other. In the quantum theory, electrons can disappear, reappear someplace else. Electrons can be in multiple states simultaneously. Now, that's crazy. That's impossible. How can electrons disappear, reappear someplace else? How can they be in parallel states simultaneously? But hey, that's just the way the universe is. The quantum theory is the craziest theory ever proposed in the history of science. It has only one thing going for it. It is correct.